I'm joined by Pauline Hanson, founding member of the One Nation Party. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. And let me start by saying that I hate you, but oh. maybe you can change my mind. Tom, I have got feelings, you know. OK. <laughs> I don't know where to start. We've got nothing in common. You're a politician. I'm a comedian. You're from Queensland. I'm from New South Wales. You've got extreme right-wing views. I like Asians. But the only thing we've got in common is that we've both got red hair. And I hate red hair. I just don't want to see Australia become Asianised or swamped by Asians. Right. Australia's most famous fish and chip shop lady left school at the age of 15. She has four children from two failed marriages. I regard myself as the average Aussie battler out there. I'm a woman that's had a breakdown in marriages. I'm a woman that's run my own small business. So what did you learn in all of those years, working long hours in that fish and chip shop? That no one else owes me a living. Okay. And you've got a steak sandwich and I'll hurt and chip. I believe we are in danger of being swamped by Asians. Between 1984 and 1995, 40% of all migrants into this country were of Asian origin. They have their own culture and religion, form ghettos and do not assimilate. And as I have said, that if we have got 40% between 1984 to 1995 so far, 40% of migrants into this country are Asians. Well, let's look at some actual numbers then. There are 866,224 Asian-born Australians out of a population of over 18 million. Now, is that in, in danger of being swamped? I don't believe those figures. Well, these are from the Department of That's Immigration. That's their, as far as I'm concerned, their book figures. I don't believe those figures. Are you xenophobic? Please explain. Xenophobia means a fear of all things foreign. No, I don't think I am. No, I'm not. Is there, is there a problem? Just because I might be... I find this very hard because I have to sort of clarify all my... what I think and how I feel about things. Precisely. Yeah, yeah. Well, precisely, because you are a federal politician. You're not just sitting, we're not just sitting around in a pub talking about things. You're a federal politician. You're standing up in federal parliament making these statements. So, of course, you should be expected and to be able to qualify. And which the majority of mainstream Australians are back me on this issue because they believe in what I'm saying also. They can see it also. But it's all these minority lobby groups who don't like the fact of what I'm saying is because it's going to upset their little world. And I, they've got a problem with it, not I. All I know is what comes from here inside. And by talking to the people out there in mainstream Australia, and their fears also. So it's from the heart, not from the head. I'm, I've been learning once I've got it since I've been in this job. It's been a big learning curve for me. Do you feel that we're in danger of being swamped by Asians? Well, if you go back to when I was young, I was always taught the yellow race will rule the world. And if we don't do something now, until we catch up a little bit, I'm afraid, yes, the yellow race will ruin the world. Do you regret now making sweeping generalisations like Aborigines are a privileged class? No, I said they receive privileges that other people don't receive because, of their, because they're Aboriginal. And which is true, and you cannot deny that. They you, do. Or what about the fact that life expectancy for Aboriginal women is 19 years less than that for non-Aboriginal women. Aboriginal men die 18 years younger than non-Aboriginal men. Is that not disadvantaged? We've got, now, just to be realistic about this, and people can't deny it that in a lot of these communities there is a big drink problem. What about infant mortality then? The infant mortality rate is two to three times higher than in the white community. And again, it can be related to the drink because the money is going on to the drink, onto alcohol, and therefore not decent food is being bought for and put on the table for these, for these children. Aboriginal people are incarcerated at 28 times the rate of non-Aboriginal people. Again, we've got to look at problems with um, the conditions that they live in, that they want to live in. All right, so your position is that 
if Aborigines die younger, their babies die more often, and they're jailed more often, they've brought it on themselves. Is that right? In the ways that they want to live. I'm not going anywhere because this is my land and I was born here and I don't know of any other place that's home. I belong here as much, so as, do we. So do as, we. much as what you do. Now, just because you're an Aboriginal is a weak excuse. Oh, and don't oh, use it as an excuse. Get in the Head car. Head down. Right, there you go. I said cuss. Get in the car. I Head didn't. Down, Here you go. Pauline Hanson is big yeah. on law and order. You heard me, eh? When police arrested one of those who'd argued with her on the streets of Ipswich, not only did she think he should face a court for swearing, she thought he was a prime candidate for her truly grand plan. No, good, thank you. I'm talking about foul language. Okay, that was used against me in the street of Ipswich. And uh, it's not acceptable. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right, not a problem. You've opened up a can of worms. That's fine with us, but we want something positive coming out of a negative statement. The administration has been given the dollars to look after their own people, and they haven't done their job. Uh, hang on a minute. You had control. The European, the European people have had control of this country for 209 years. You've made a mess of it in 209 years and you expect ATSIC to clean it up in six. There is actually agreement around this table that ATSIC has wasted money. But cutting off funding altogether, these women see as simply naive. You are a very young person. Now you quoted your age as 42. That is still very young. Not so much in age, I'm talking about ears, but in knowledge. What I would like to see you do, Pauline, is to be educated. Northern Aboriginal people, now you're kicking the Muslims around. You're just a racist redneck with your red hair. Go, go away. Go back to Ipswich and you piss your chips off. Disgraceful. You're a woman lacking uh, moral fiber. You are intellectually dishonest and you're not welcome here. <laughs> We have to take a strong stance to ensure that people that come here are compatible with our culture, our way of life, our beliefs and our laws. So what I'm saying is, pressure the government to say no more Muslims in Australia, no more Muslim refugees in Australia. Take a strong stance, protect our security, our safety on our streets and our people. We are a Christian country and I don't believe that Islam is compatible with our culture and our way of life. And that's why we have problems in Australia on the streets. And a lot of people are opposing the mosques that are built here. Um, I, I have a bone to pick with Pauline in regards to your statement that we're a Christian nation. Actually, I think we're a multi-faith nation. Um, indeed, we're a nation of people who sometimes don't have a religion. Um, I think we are a broad spectrum. We are diverse. That is our strength. That has been our strength um, ever since our formation. Uh, clearly, we have some serious reconciliation and reparation to do with the first Australians, um, but we are strong in our diversity. Um, thank you. A truly multicultural country can never be strong or united. And the world is full of failed and tragic examples, ranging from Ireland to Bosnia to Africa and closer to home, Papua New Guinea. America and Great Britain are currently paying the price. Japan, India, Burma, Ceylon, and every new African nation are fiercely anti-white and anti one another. Do we want or need any of these people here? I am one red-blooded Australian who says no and who speaks for 90% of Australians. I should have the right to have a say in who comes into my country. Now, I understand Islam does not believe in democracy, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly or freedom of the press. You have Hizbat Tahrir that preaches the fact that they will um, want total control of the people. 
Pauline, can I just That's... interrupt you there? I mean, can you make such a blanket statement? Islam doesn't believe in democracy uh, when north of Australia is the biggest democracy in our region and it's Islamic. Exactly. No, look, I don't, I don't believe that. I don't believe that because you've got a lot of countries around the world, they, they have a political ideology that want to control the people. Now, I want to see a separation of, of the you two. Don't think this that's is true. what I'm you saying. You don't think that's true of what, Indonesia, though, do you? What, I think they control the people and their beliefs. I really do. In, in answer to your question, uh, I think that the key to this is that you, uh, you marginalise the extremists and the preachers of hate, uh, not an entire community. And in terms of the broader issue about uh, Islam, the world's biggest uh, Islamic nation happens to be Indonesia, our, our neighbour to the near north, uh, where they have had a stunning success in becoming a democratic country in the region, and I think we should all be very proud of that. And it's an example of an is uh, a nation, predominantly Muslim, uh, where they've done tremendous things in terms of being a strong democracy with a strong free press. We have terrorism on the streets that we've never had before. We've had murders com committed under the name of Islam, as we have the Lint Cafe, Curtis Chang, and the two police officers in, in um, Melbourne. All right. So this has happened. You have Can I just say, I'm sure the, Pauline, I'm sure the fact checkers will be onto this, but when you say we've never had terrorism in this country before, that's simply not, not the case. The 1970s, there were multiple bombings by Croatian Catholic extremists. Um, this has happened right. in Australia before. It's not the first time. We should at least get that straight. All right. I accept that. I'd just like to say that um, you're in a position now where you can make a change. I think you should use that position positively instead of driving this fear amongst the community. Why don't you look at domestic violence? Why don't you look at education? Why don't you look at health? You're in a position that many Australian women would envy, that envy you and would like to be in that same position. Because, why are you, why are you pushing Australian... this agenda and, and, and pushing fear into our community and making people like myself and my friend here worried to come into the studio because of protesters outside? The protesters were not there. The protesters were there. That's the court you against me. Pauline. You know, Miss Hanson here is not an amateur. She's not inexperienced. Miss Hanson, you've been in politics now for 20 years and you know exactly what you're doing and the language you use and the power of your language. You know, 20 years ago, it started off with blaming Indigenous Australians. Then it became about we're being swamped by Asians. Now it's about blaming the Muslim and the Muslim community. It is the politics of pitting one section of our community against another section of our community, about simplifying complex problems and placing the blame on one group at one point in time. It's the politics of fear and division. And Miss Hanson, you're incredibly good at it. It's Ms. Not Hansen, I'm saying you play so, the politics of fear and hate because it serves your political interests I, and you've been doing it for the past 20 years and you're very good at it. Muslims have been a part of Australia for a long, long time, many, many years, when you go back to the Gold Rush days and they were in here in Australia. But it's only in the last, what, 10, 20 years that we have seen a rise of terrorism on our streets. You've got to ask yourself the question, why? Why is it because happening? we invaded their country, Pauline. <laughs> It's not about invading <laughs> because we went to war so with their nation so and that, killed so that, their people. So that's so a Ms. reason Hansen, why a they should... So, Ms. Hansen, a five-year-old Sam so Bastiari should... can't come to this country now, but I could have come 28 years ago. Sam, we have problems now. That, that, to take it back there, that's absolutely ridiculous, what you're talking about. All right? That is exactly about, what we're talking it about. It's in your policy document. About, it's black and white it's in your no, policy document. Sam, you're talking about something that's ridiculous back when... How long ago? How I came to this country 28 years ago. That's 28 years ago. We're talking about now, what is happening now and the day, today in the world with the terrorist attacks. So and today I couldn't come to this country. All right, sorry, I, I'm, I'm going to put you... Well, you've now seen the impact of your calls to halt Asian immigration. Have you figured that perhaps life is just a little more complicated than rolling down the shutters? As what? What do you mean rolling down the shutters? As far as what? Closing the front gate, drawing the blinds, cutting Australia off from the rest of the world. Do I propose that? 
It would appear cutting, so. Cutting Australia off from the rest of the world? It would appear so. I think I'm more concerned about it, um, Australia and the people here. You see, I'm, I'm trying to say, let's clean up our own backyard and look after our own here before we worry about everyone else and let's, overseas. Let's, They're not concerned about us. Let's get that straight. They're, let's they withdraw look from the United they look Nations. After their own just a sec. Let's withdraw from the United Nations. Yes. Let's, see, let's cease all foreign aid. Let's halt all immigration. That's right. That's because closing the, and bolting be, the front door. Be, oh, I think you're over-dramatising things here a bit. I think you want to look at the unemployment that we have in here in this country and start with immigration. Why should people come out here and get onto our welfare system? It's only because the government has actually put a sh shutter on that themselves, that they have to be here two years before they get onto a welfare system. Why should the taxpayer be out there paying for someone else to come and live in this country? They don't even have to know English or even have, have to learn. Um, we are do putting this all up for them. What is one to conclude from that other than you are xenophobic and racist? No, it's not. It's a, wanting to know how this country is going to look in 50 or 100 years' time from this. But and you, you've got a base. Why, why are you making me out to look as if I'm a racist? Why don't you go and ask Japan their immigration policy or Korea or Sri Lanka? Ask them how they feel about white people going into their own country. And yet you respect their views and they can have, be proud of their own homogeneity. But if I voice my opinion, I'm, I'm made to look as if I'm a racist. I don't, I, I don't, um, I won't cop that. Welfare payments to single mothers. I look at it this way. Why should the government support single mothers with their first, second and third child, first one okay, as a mistake, but why should we keep paying for the second and third and fourth and so on? Do you believe that welfare payments encourage single mothers to have more children? Yes, it does. What should happen to repeat sex offenders? Do you have a suggestion as to what should be done? Yes. <laughs> um, I think I should talk to some medical doctors first before I voice my opinion. Medical doctors. So, you, so do you possibly have in mind something like chemical castration for repeat sex offenders? I mean, in, in, in very horrendous situations, possibly yes I do. She is just plain wrong. And she's wrong in a way that can lead to very great evil. Evil? Yes. Because um, if she got to the stage of being able to influence the policies of this government, isn't it an evil outcome if Australia tries to turn itself into a racist society in the kind of world we're living in? She's telling a lot of bullshit. She doesn't know what she's talking about. She's a racist person I'm who's getting, using the privilege of Parliament to slam Asians, Aboriginal people and all good Australians. You're Charles Perkins Australia has spent a lifetime I'm trying to reconcile black and white Australia. <coughs> then along came Pauline Hanson. Now in the fish and chip shop, you're very good there, but not out in the public. And saying, on the midday show last month, Perkins' frustration spilled over. Just not enough, and I don't invite her to come out to some of the settlements and reserves and have a look. Is there room enough in your heart to be caring and tolerant and sensitive? Don't say, is there room enough in my heart? Yes, I am. I'm a very caring person. But I tell you what, you've got to be hard, you've got to be cruel to be kind.